I do love to photograph people working. In this case, glazer glass. Glazer glass installs mostly uh, auto windshields. And yeah, hung out with them for a little while, seeing uh, what kind of work they're doing. And it's all about the angles. And in this case, I saw the steps and I'm like, okay, let's see what it looks like from there. But had to squeeze underneath this um, conveyor belt system or whatever that was but it just made for a really cool shot but then the warehouse with all these windshields from various different types of vehicles there was potential there and the hard part sometimes is picking okay do I compress the space with a long lens do I open it up Need more separation. Let's go all the way back here. Compress the space. See what that looks like. Okay, obviously I went for the compress the space with a longer lens. In this case, a 70 to 200 image stabilized. But it still wasn't right. I wanted to fill the entire frame with stuff. And then it was just a matter of being patient, waiting for the workers to walk across the frame. But look, now I'm go looking through a different aisle to see if that looks better. And there it was. Patience. The longer you spend with people, and the less communicating you do, and you just literally document, the better the photos are going to be. And that's universal, no matter what type of assignment or what type of situation you're in. Spend the time and eventually, it might take half an hour, it might take 15 minutes, who knows, but then you just become this thing, walking around with cameras, documenting what is happening. Good morning, I am in Mattapoisin, Massachusetts. Those guys are the Triad Boatworks guys, and that is a very nice looking sailboat. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good, yourself? Good. That's Bill, that's Silas. What's going on, boys? How's it going? I don't know. It's kind of cold out. <laughs> I know. That, and this you're winter, we're getting ready for summer. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> So you said this is only the second boat so far going in. Yep. Uh, this harbor is usually packed with boats. And you can see the sticks actually from the moorings out there somewhere. So this is a brave guy. He wants to get out and sail his <laughs> boat, which, I, which is good, right? To Boston. To Boston. Yeah. Well, I'd rather That's take right. my car to Boston, but... <laughs> yeah. So yeah, photographically, I mean, I just drove up and... Um, you know how it is, you see something, get out there, take the photos, and this is what I got as I as I uh, drove up. They were putting in, what's the name of that front sail that you guys were putting in when I That's got the jib. The jib, so they were working on the jib, and you can see the duplicity happening in this particular photo. So what I'm doing is I'm breaking up the space and putting the two different gentlemen on, an, on each side with the tension, the way that he's pulling on the rope on one side and then He's uh, helping on the other side, so it makes for a real compact image, um, and it it really tells the, an entire story. But you can see when I was uh, in the boat, uh, I'm always looking for different angles. I'm moving around. I'm not just staying in the same spot, hoping for the best. Move around, you know. Um, when you grow relationships with these guys, they all know who I am. They know that I'm not going to be like uh, throwing myself in the water and blaming them for chucking me over. But, but uh, I mean, it happens. And um, as a matter of fact, FYI, see those little ladders right over there? About 12 years ago, uh, there's a, a platform on the other side of that uh, dock over there 
and the kids, they dive into the water in the summer, and the lifeguard was heading out on a rowboat, and I came down one of those ladders, and the ladder came off, and I fell in the water, and I lost over 10 grand in gear right here in lovely Mattapoisett Harbor. <laughs> but I, I guess that happens. Um, anyway, it's time to go photograph some more stuff. All right, guys, thank you so much. We'll see you all soon. Bye. All right, all right. So I see a fryer installing a bell. Well, at least I thought they were installing the bell. It turns out that they were installing the framework for the bell. And this is at Our Lady's Chapel in downtown New Bedford where the Franciscan friars live. I always look for a different vantage point and in this case uh, this window was directly across the gap with the U-shaped uh, building where they were installing that new framework. Let's go check it out. It's funny, but a few years ago, I shot a piece on the Franciscan Friars. I shot a small book in black and white. And this is actually the cloister, which I had never actually been up there. But things are uh, in transition for them, so uh, I had free access and to roam around. You can see here, there's a big gap, and it's five floors straight down. Okay, I'm not as close to the edge as I look like I am right there. But still, I I'm trying to put the placement of the bell in perspective. Looking for different angles, it didn't work there, I'm coming back, and I'm waiting for that moment that, you know, uh, shows them putting the bell, it shows the community, it, it shows everything, and there's a good example right there. You have to be patient with things like this. Very patient. But just because you got a good photo doesn't mean you're done. Look for something else. Wait for that moment. There's a lot of lines happening in this picture and that's why it works. Jumped on the ladder that they had over there. Look for something else. And then all of a sudden, the fryer decides to linger for the first time. <laughs> 